Hello viewers, do you want to learn more about the COVID-19 treatment protocol? Are you curious about the benefits of the drugs used in COVID-19? If that's the case, you may be interested in watching this video. It's possible that your quest will come to an end right here. Please see this video till the end. We are attempting to understand the science behind the drugs used in COVID-19 in the most possible straightforward manner. As the second wave of COVID-19 infects more people, urgent calls have flooded social media and WhatsApp for drugs like Remdesivir, Fabipiravir, Ivermectin, Dexamethasone, Doxycycline and even Convalescent Plasma. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization has listed the Indian version of COVID-19 as a variant of global concern. In this video, we will go over the scientific merits of various drugs that have been used to treat COVID-19. Uh, the treatment choices for COVID-19 can be divided into four categories. What works well? Number one. Number two. What works under limited conditions? Number three. What does not work? And number four. What is harmful? Before we get into the details of therapies, we need to understand the pathogenesis of COVID-19. Actually, it will decide the most effective treatment options. So to begin, let's look at these uh, two things. First of all, what are the stages of the clinical course of COVID-19 disease? And second one is, what is the prognosis of COVID-19. Then finally, we will talk about the uh, type of medication that's needed for a particular patient group as well as if the drugs that are being prescribed can help with COVID-19 care. To answer the first question, let us first learn about COVID-19's clinical course, which is divided into uh, three phases. Number one is uh, viremic phase. Number two is acute or pneumonia phase. And number three is the phase of complications. During the viremic phase, viral replication is extremely rapid. This period lasts for seven to eight days and uh, it is characterized by mild and sometimes non-specific symptoms such as fever, nausea, fatigue, muscle pain, headache, dry cough, inability to smell certain objects, loss of taste, abdominal pain and diarrhea. Prognosis and recovery are good in patients at this stage who are able to contain the infection. The second phase is the acute or pneumonia phase, which usually occurs after seven to eight days. This phase uh, is marked by a high fever, cough, and shortness of breath. This stage necessitates close supervision and management. At this stage, the patient develop uh, a full-blown viral pneumonia. Blood tests often suggest uh, that elevated levels of lactate uh, dehydrogenase, LDH and C-reactive protein, CRP. Also, blood tests will suggest uh, lymphocytopenia, that is a lack of white blood cells in the blood. At this stage, 
the patient's immune system begins to react. When the body's immune system is functioning properly, it aids in full recovery. If not, the patient enters into the third phase, that is the phase of complications. This third phase is characterized by extrapulmonary systemic hyperinflammatory syndrome. This is also known as cytokine storm. Uh, in this video, we are not going into the deep details of cytokine storm. However, this happens because the immune system uh, starts overreacting. Patients develop acute respiratory distress syndrome, shortly known as ARDS, followed by acute heart failure, acute kidney injury, liver failure, shock, secondary bacterial infections, coagulopathies and uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation. So these are uh, some of the simple explanations about the clinical course of COVID-19. The next question that concerns is COVID-19's prognosis. In fact, COVID-19 infection can cause a wide range of symptoms from mild flu-like symptoms to serious acute respiratory distress syndrome. However, 80% of the infected individuals exhibit a mild illness. Only 14% have serious illness and just nearly 5% have critical illness. Approximately 10% of the patients require hospital admission, just 10% due to COVID-19 pneumonia. And out of that, approximately 10% uh, will require ICU care, including invasive ventilation due to acute respiratory distress syndrome. Last year, in one of the episodes, this channel reassured viewers that COVID-19 should not cause them to panic. So, out of 100 COVID-19 infected patients, only 10 will need to be rushed to the hospital and only one out of 100 will need ICU treatment, including ventilation. It's possible that 80 out of 100 patients would not need any medication at all. Individuals with comorbidities uh, such as chronic lung disease, cardiovascular disease, asthma and diabetes uh, they tend to be more likely to die. Critical disease is also a risk for uh, the elderly people. However, the majority of patients recover. So far, about 2 crore 37 lakh coronavirus cases have been registered in India, with 1 crore 97 lakh cases recovered and about 2,58,000 deaths uh, reported. This implies that the case fatality rate of the coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 is nearly 1%. Now let's look at the COVID-19 treatment choices. A review article published in the Springer Nature on 4th of January this year mentioned COVID-19 treatment option as a difficult journey between failed attempts and experimental drugs. Currently, there is no specific therapy against COVID-19 disease. In fact, treatment options are based on previous experience with other coronaviruses or viral infection outbreaks. Anyway, Let's take it uh, one by one for further clarity. At first, please remember, we divided the uh, therapeutic options uh, for COVID-19 into four groups. What works well, what works under limited conditions, what does not work and what is harmful. Let's go one by one. The first category is 
what works well. Drugs like dexamethasone, tocilizumab, anticoagulants, budesonide, oxygen and paracetamol fall under the first category. Dexamethasone is a corticosteroid which is administered in a careful setting when a patient requires supplemental oxygen and needs to be tightly monitored. Dexamethasone modulates the immune response and reduces mortality among those who need oxygen or ventilation or other forms of respiratory support. But at a very critical stage under strict supervision. Tocilizumab it is a humanized monoclonal antibody. Usually it is a drug uh, to treat moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis. In case of COVID-19 it is used in the stage of severe or clinical illness when rapid increase in oxygen levels uh, is required. It is said that this particular drug can reduce the mortality in severe patients who require ventilation. Uh, it is also reported that it reduces progression uh, from oxygen to ventilation, uh, uh, but uh, just preliminary reports. Anticoagulants are the medications that prevent blood clotting. During the severe stage of the disease COVID-19, only among patients who show coagulopathy, that is blood clotting, anticoagulants can prevent the symptoms of blood clots. Coming to budesonide, it is a corticosteroid inhaler which is used to control and prevent symptoms caused by asthma, symptoms like uh, wheezing, uh, shortness of breath, etc. For the treatment of COVID-19, budesonide is used in the stage of mild breathing distress with oxygen saturation levels falling below 92 to 94 percent. Recent studies have shown budesonide is capable of reducing the likelihood of disease progression to severe. So it's, it is supposedly work in certain condition. Now coming back to the oxygen, oxygen extracted and filtered from, uh, filtered from uh, air is given at a stage when oxygen saturation uh, as measured by a pulse oximeter falls uh, to below 92 to 94% at sea level and does not come back up and stay stable with deep breathing. Inhaled oxygen helps patients stay alive. Some patients are asked to adapt uh, the prone position that is lying on their stomach. You know by this time the what is the prone position. So that prone position uh, is uh, suggested for raising their oxygen levels better. Paracetamol. Paracetamol every six hours is typically advised to treat the symptoms of fever and body pain. In COVID-19 also paracetamol is, is used uh, to tackle the symptoms of fever and body pain. Therefore, please keep in mind that none of the drugs mentioned above are brand new or exclusive to COVID. Many of them are still in use for other diseases and uh, have already been used in the treatment of other diseases. The other treatment choices in this group except paracetamol are only for the critical stage of the disease, not to use randomly. Please remember. Now let's see what are the drugs that work under limited conditions. Remdesivir and convalescent plasma fall under this category. Unfortunately. People are jumping and running between pillars and posts to get a dose of remdesivir 
often paying much more than the drug's MRP. Does Remdesivir deserve such attention? Let's see what happens. Remdesivir is a broad-spectrum antiviral agent that may inhibit the replication of a wide range of viruses. Remdesivir may be used in a low-flow oxygen state means when a patient has pneumonia and requires oxygen but not a ventilator. That is the low-flow oxygen state. Remdesivir is ineffective after a patient is put on a ventilator. And Remdesivir is also equally ineffective for asymptomatic mild or moderate cases. As a result, Remdesivir has no role to play in approximately 90% of the COVID patients. Some studies have shown that Remdesivir prevents escalation of the disease to ventilators. However, some studies have shown that it is not effective in lowering mortality or duration of mechanical ventilation. The WHO has issued a conditional recommendation against using Remdesivir. A conditional recommendation means there is not enough evidence to support a drug's use. Recently, Indian Council of Medical Research ICMR, and All India Institute of Medical Science that is AIMS, have declared that Remdesivir is of no use beyond 10 days of onset of symptoms. Viewers may recall that almost a year back, a critic's take exposed the questionable merit of Remdesivir in treating COVID-19. I am sharing the link in this description box, which you may watch again. Convalescent plasma is a component of human blood that carries antibodies. Convalescent plasma is obtained from a recently recovered non-pregnant individual and it is transfused in the patient. Various studies have indicated that for convalescent plasma may be effective if the treatment is received within 72 hours of first symptom onset. And convalescent plasma dose should contain high titers of antibodies. However, plasma is ineffective beyond the early symptom stage and some trials have even reported that increased deaths in the group receiving plasma. In many other countries, plasma has been approved only as an investigational therapy. That means uh, it is under a trial. Recently, ICMR and AIMS said that plasma is of no use beyond seven days of onset of symptoms. Our next point of discussion, what does not work? Please take a note. Ivermectin, Favipiravir, Doxycycline, Azithromycin, Amoxicillin, Vitamin C, Vitamin D, Zinc do not work at all. A critic's take wishes to add emphasis on this statement, do not work at all. Let's examine the reasons behind such additional emphasis. Ivermectin, now widely been prescribed, is an anti-parasitic agent that targets worms, insects and parasites to kill them. Studies in monkey cells showed that Ivermectin could inhibit uh, replication of SARS-CoV-2 virus. But these have failed to produce positive results in humans. Ivermectin is ineffective in treating both critical and non-critical hospitalized COVID patients. And the COVID patients, those with mild symptoms, Ivermectin is also ineffective for them. It also does not work as a prophylaxis, means it does not work even to prevent the disease. Early studies that claimed benefits were withdrawn later for unreliable data. 
though the AIMS and ICMR protocol allows ivermectin for mild cases, uh, the WHO recommends against using ivermectin for COVID-19 treatment, except for clinical trials. Favipiravir is an antiviral agent which is supposed to work by preventing replication of viral material. This drug as of now likely have no benefits in treating COVID-19 at any stage of the disease. Some studies have shown that uh, Favipiravir is uh, ineffective even in the laboratory. Unfortunately, the drug is being prescribed. Favipiravir is approved to treat influenza in Japan but with limited evidence. Favipiravir showed some promise in animal models for treating Ebola and Nipah virus but it was not tested rigorously in humans. There is no such huge human trial for Favipiravir even for Nipah virus and Ebola virus. In the last year, a critics take informed its viewers about the limitations of favipiravir in treating COVID-19. Please see that video once more. Doxycycline, azithromycin, amoxicillin are antibiotics which are used to treat a wide range of illness caused by bacteria. Antibiotics do not work on viruses and hence have no benefit on COVID-19. So please do not take doxycycline, azithromycin or amoxicillin if you are down with COVID-19. Please do not take. In case of hospital aged patients, some doctors may prescribe antibiotics to avoid other bacterial infections. However, indiscriminate use of antibiotics is leading to growing antibiotic resistance. The official AIMS protocol does not list antibiotics for non-hospitalized COVID patients. Vitamin C, Vitamin D, Zinc, they are micronutrients. They work to improve our normal bodily functions and immune response. And these supplements work over a long period of time. They do not raise micronutrients level immediately. Vitamins and other supplements do not offer any benefit to treating COVID or for that matter any other diseases. Uh, although micronutrients are not harmful, but unregulated supplements and excess consumption are known to cause illness. So we are coming to the last topic for today's discussion. What is harmful? Yes, obviously. It is hydroxychloroquine or HCQ. One year ago, when there were plenty of talks about diplomatic relations between India and the United States of America on the issue of hydroxychloroquine, a critics take categorically warned against the harmful effects of the drug if used in treating COVID-19. HCQ is an anti-malarial and uh, autoimmune medication. HCQ is also an autoimmune medication which kills the malarial parasite as anti-malarial and in case of autoimmune disease, it can help by lowering inflammation. In humans, all rigorous studies demonstrated that HCQ has no benefit at any stage of the COVID-19 disease or even as prophylaxis. Interestingly, the AIMS and ICMR protocol allow HCQ as an alternative to ivermectin. However, multiple studies have shown that the usage of HCQ raises the risk of serious cardiac problems when used in COVID-19 patients. To conclude, it is important to note that the majority of the interventions and medications that patients are administered have not shown any benefit in the treatment of COVID-19. But please don't be confused. Simply take paracetamol to regulate your fever during the viremic phase for first seven to eight days. Drink plenty of water 
and stick to a natural protein diet. At this point, complete bed rest is needed. You should not hop, skip or leap for anything and everything. Don't be unnecessarily alarmed or panicked. Maintain your calmness and composure. Maintain a safe lifestyle. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Please share this video with others if you considered it to be useful. Also please encourage them to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please stay tuned for more details and updates.